What's up everybody, Corey at the Labyrinth Games here. This is not a live commentary, this is an aftermatch commentary from last night's uh, Thursday Night Modern. Um, up on the table here on the left we have Max, who took one mulligan and put a card on the bottom, playing red-green Valakut. On the right we have David on Elves, I think it's mono-green, not 100% sure. Uh, looks like he mulliganed twice, puts two cards on the bottom. So uh, let's kick this off. Elves is on the play, drops, Jens Cone, uh, drops a cavern naming Elves obviously. Lana Ralph, that's probably one of the best out of the gate starts for uh, elves that you can do. Um, and Max opens up uh, with cracked footed foothills, going for a land. Just looks like he's taking two and dropping search for tomorrow. Um, so, red green Valakut doing what it does, just ramping out of the gates. It seems like a good matchup for Valakut because elves doesn't interact with you at all, so it just lets you kind of go off. But um, elves is known to put you on a clock, so. That's that's the good thing for elves. Um, so Dave drops the Dwindlin's Elite, makes his 1-1 token. Great card. Two mana for basically, what, three three power and toughness, 2-2 two, two and 1-1. One, one. Um, but this matchup just isn't as good as you think with Valakut because, again, with that clock being put on you, uh, elves doesn't hurt itself, so you can't just Amber Cool through the breach for the win. You can eat their board, and sometimes elves comes out of the gate so fast that sometimes Amber Cool can't even eat their entire board. So it doesn't mean you automatically win. All right, so Max ends up lightning bolting the Alana Ralph, hopefully just slowing him up, and maybe, since he did put two cards on the bottom, get, get him on being mana screwed. Um, yep, so David does jam another Alana Ralph, misses a line drop, which is actually pretty huge in this matchup. That way he can't just deploy his entire hand. So that lightning bolt was massive. Um, Max searches, pulls up a land, uh, puts his other search to one, shuffling up. So this match is actually looking pretty good for Max. Again, if David didn't mulligan to five this game and miss a line drop, um, this would be a very, very bad situation for Max. Um, so Max draws his card. Gets what is that? Field of the Dead. Yep. Puts Field of the Dead into play. Tapped. I've known a lot of decks starting to run that card in Red Green. Valakut. I'm not sure because, uh, like. I've played Red Green Valakut quite a bit, and I've missed land color drops before, and it hurts. So I don't know if just running a that colorless land is will do it. Like that's that's rough. I just could not put it in my in my deck list. I wouldn't. So it looks like Max has an Ember Cool ended through the breach in his hand, so he does have the combo. But at this point in time, uh, that doesn't matter. Okay, so David does drop draws a card, drops another Dwin and Elite. So you're putting Max on to doing the combo right now, but that doesn't do anything. Like you threw the breach Ember Cool into play knock him to 15, and you eat his board, but that does, like, you still don't win. I mean, you did what your deck wants to do, um, but now you put elves into top deck mode, which is much better than top deck mode for red-green Valakut. I've bricked so many times playing that deck where you just hit land or ramp into land. So, this game is definitely far from over for having a optimal red-green draw. Uh, David still cuts it. And draws. I can't see. Oh, through the breach. So he does get through the breach. That was off the deck, so that means he has two through the breaches in his hand. Jams Emmer cool gets in there for 15. David's still at five. And you have to sack his board, but that's you're still in a good position here. Uh, or I don't know, they're scooping? He's scooping anyways. I don't I would not scoop in that position. I do not know why you like that's I don't that's just my like I would make Max play that out. I would not have scooped there. That was not good at all. Like that's you have so many elves to come out of that, especially in elves. All you have to do is hit another green mana. Um, I, I assume that he had a bunch of two-drop or three-drop elves in his hand or collected companies, but you still you don't scoop in that position. That's just not a good spot to scoop. Um, all right, so we're going to the sideboard. I assume red-green Valakut's bringing some sweepers. I know some red-green decks run main sweepers main deck, but with the change of environment, everybody playing Stone Stoneforge, um, a lot of decks don't run too many main deck sweepers. So, okay, so he did have a sweltering... Uh, a sweltering what is it, Sweltering Sun in his hand? That's a cycling, do three damage each creature in place. He does have some of those in his main deck. But he's bringing in three, probably Anger of the Gods. I see him taking out some combo pieces. That way he just stays alive and doesn't get overrun. Yep, so three Anger of Gods. Elves, I don't know what he's bringing in. I'm not too familiar with the Elves sideboard list. Um, is he just playing mono green? If he's playing mono green, maybe some interaction with red green Valakut. Maybe like, I know some decks run. Uh, boring turn forge tenders in the board for the pro red that we can't sweep you and 
I know some black elf lists bring in hand, uh, hand stripping cards like Thoughtseize, but I didn't see other colors there, so we will see here. Um, we're going to jump forward a little bit while they shuffle up. Now we don't got to watch them shuffle for five minutes. All right. Oh, okay, so he is playing black. He opened up with a uh, black-green uh, palace, dropped a line of elves. Um, and two max opening up with Search for Tomorrow, three optimal. All right, so the elves is coming out of the gates. Turn two dwindling elite, turn one on a elf. Hits a second line drop being a Pendlehaven, which is huge. All right, so Max drops Valakut. So we've got optimal start from both sides. Um, and the phone rings. One second. All right, I'm back. I had to answer a phone call there while I'm doing this overdubbing. All right, so again, both both decks are coming out of the gate swinging. Okay, so he does black and white. So he could have Borington Forge Hunters coming in from the board. Maybe around some Thought Seizes. Uh, Max bolts the Dwindling Elite to take the clock off of him. Give him a little bit of breathing room. Uh, so David has four mana up. I'm expecting maybe a collected company here, end of turn. Uh, Max searches for tomorrow, pulls up another mountain, increasing that mountain count to turn that Valakut on as quick as possible. Um, both doing some shuffling up. After board, I think this game leans heavily more towards the Red Green Valakut. You bring in all those sweepers, that takes that clock off. But again, you can never count elves out. Elves just has this weird explosion where out of nowhere, it just wins. Um, especially when they don't have a board. Like now, it doesn't look scary, but it can. Alright, so Max looks like he's a little bit land flooded. His hand has got quite a few lands. Uh, deploys a windswept heath. Probably just going to end up cracking it and passing the turn from how it looks. I thought I saw a prime time in there, so this might just be a long term prime time if he can survive that long. Oh, there it is. End of turn collected company. Pulls the top cards of his deck. Ooh. Wait. Oh, uh, well, he looked at an extra card. This is just casual Thursday and modern, so uh, if you saw that there, he did pull an extra card, but again, that's we don't crack down too much on that usually. So, um, looks at his cards, see some options. Pulls out, what is that, Nettle Sentinel and the new, what is that guy? That's the guy that searches up other elves and gives all elves plus one plus one. Yeah. So deploys that. Now suddenly his board looks very, very dangerous with uh, all of them coming across. Anthem effect from the middle guy. He's taking six. And it looks like he's holding up four mana for another collected company. So this is exactly what I was talking about, where you go from two one one elves to lethal on board in two turns. So Max cracks his one swap heath, goes to nine. Probably gonna pull out Stomping Ground into play tapped. Oh no. Okay, okay, so he's going for the alternate lands, gotcha. So that comes to play tapped. Still counts as a four star mountain, so still gonna turn on Valakut when needed. Shuffling up here. So Max has, needs to do something here. Clearly he's representing another collecting company um, and his board state is already over the top. So Max needs a sweeper pretty much off the top here, I'm guessing. Draws, so what is that, Emrakul? That is not going to do it. Deploys a land. You don't got enough to start valicuting things. Um, did he have a through the breach? I couldn't quite see if he had a through the breach. Um... Even if he has a through the breach here, that doesn't do anything with, I'm guessing, uh, Emrakul, because this is the board position I was talking about, where you can sock all the permanents you have because you have a huge board, and you just swing and kill him afterwards, because Emrakul doesn't do much here. So, Max is going to think tank here, seeing if he has any outs. Couldn't quite see what was in his hand, I'm not sure what he's thinking about, what his choices are. Um, so he has prime time, Ember Cool through the breach, and one extra card in there. I can't tell what that is. Um, so we're still thinking. I'm guessing at this point in time, he is going to have to, through the breach, a prime time, pulling up some lands, probably a Valakut and a mountain, and shoot some stuff. Swing. Shoot some stuff, maybe? Not sure. Again, with him sitting on a collected company, collected company again, this, I, I don't know, this is a weird, weird board state right here. Um, 
so Max just checked up on the Oracle text of Field of the Dead. So the other option maybe he's thinking about is he's trying to figure out if Field of the Dead could save him here in this position. I don't think so. Hmm. So his option, so his only out here is through in the breach, through the breaching prime time and then trying to get prime time to get him there. Yep. So we've got Valakut, we got a mountain, we've got a sheltering heat thing. He got stomping around, but they have another mountain. So even at this point in time, Field of the Dead, I don't think is eh, going to do anything. It's just going to deploy more things to the board. So maybe Field of the Dead and... No, Valakut Mountain. One mountain, two mountain, three mountain, four mountain, five mountain. So you'd have five mountain, two Valakut triggers. So, he does that in response. Um, I don't know if I want to do that in response to through the breach. I think I let, I think I let prime time come in. Let him get his targets. Let him get his lines. He's gonna do, and then collect company to give him less information. Um, yeah. So he looks at him. So, all right. So he grabs two guys pretty quick. Uh, so you've got, uh, what is it, Elfish Archdruid and Shaman of the Pact. So he's going to bolt them for a point of damage for each elf he has with the Shaman of the Pact. And then the Archdruid bolsters his entire army. Lord effect. Uh, but again, I probably would have waited for the prime time. Let the prime time get out two lands. Let the triggers go on the stack. And then I probably would have... And I probably would have done the uh, Collected Company then. Alright, so he grabs two lands... Two mountains, it's both in two. No, I don't know if I'd have grabbed two mountains there. If I'd have grabbed one, two, three, four, if I grab a Valakut and the mountain and get two bolt triggers, or do you even just grab two Valakuts and then when you grab your next two mountains, you can bolt six targets? That'd have been one, two, three, four, five. That'd been his entire board. I think that'd have been the better route. Um, was just grabbing more Valakutes. So, I don't know. We'll see if that pays off here. I'm not sure. Alright. Goes back through his deck. Um, trying to find... Oh, so he stops on Field of the Rune? Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead. Um, I know we asked about that earlier. It's rereading it. Double checking. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I, I understand why it's good in the deck. Gives you some extra zombies. Gives you the extra out. But, I don't know if I like that. I think it's too cutesy. Like, maybe if they end up, like, blowing up your Valakuts or something, that's a good alternate out. So he's doing math, checking the board again. So if you look at his land, he's got a Sheltered Thicket, Mountain, Valakut, that's three, Stomping Ground, Cinder Glades, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So he's got six right now, so Field of the Rune will make it seven. So he'll get two, two, two zombies if he goes for it. I don't think so. I think you just go for Valakut and burn some more face off. I don't think zombie saves you here. Double checks it again. Starts reading it. I think it's too cutesy. Too cutesy indeed. Um, doing his math, counting his lands. That's another reason, like um, when you when you pick up these decks and have lots of lots of um, triggers and different things to happen. Unless you play a deck and you know its ins and outs, then that also helps you get past these math options quicker. Um, so. All right, so he separates those lands. That's the six, so you can realize he does have six types. It's going to go... Valakut Field of Runes? No. I got a bolt again. At this point in time, you can't go Valakut and not a land. If he pulls out a Valakut and another land, he could still bolt twice. And then you kill Shaman of the Pact and uh, Nettle Sentinel. And then you take two from Elves and still live. You're at one. Okay, is it? Oh no, because he's going to make two of those guys. That makes two blockers. That makes sense. Two blockers, and he gets to bolt something. There we go. Okay. Now, worst case scenario, he can jump twice, take one, go to two, even if David has a lowered. 
He'll take two and go to one. And be in a pretty good position. David draws his card. Windmill slams. Oh, another Shaman of the Pack. Doesn't matter. I forgot he had that in his hand. Good game. Enter scoop phase. Yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel the field of the dead was a little cutesy there. I think if he just pulls Valakutes. If he just pulls Valakutes and gems and Valakutes, I think he wins there. And did not. So I'm gonna scoop up, go to game three, shuffle up. We're gonna fast forward a bit here and just get right into game three and make sure they don't do any sideboarding. They they don't sideboard anymore here. Alright. Uh, Max looks like he's got stuff. He's good. All right. Max opens up with Valakut. Great start with Valakut. Comes to play tapped. All right. Boss me. All right. So uh, Elves opens up. Drops her Mystic. Great. Great one drop. They got their black and green and uh, ready for a three drop on turn two. Um, so Max cracks Wooded Foothill. Oh, telephone. Take a small break here. One second. Not like a sweet telemarketer. Okay. We'll get this back up going. Um, so he cracks that, takes three damage, lightning bolts himself for two drop. Secure tribe builder. Good jumper. Nope. Okay, so far seeks can grab some more mountains. Oh, he goes for a uh, thicket. Um, David goes. So he wants to probably drop a Dwindon's Elite or a three drop elf here. Elvish Arch Trude would be nice here. Um, to explode the board. Oh, another Elvish Mystic into Dwindon Elite. Oh, nope, Wild Collar. All right, so he anthems his entire board, has tons of mana. Not a bad start for elves. Uh, Max is up to four lands. Coming to play tapped. And, ooh, anger the gods. You've angered the gods. Sweeps the board away. That's what Max wants to do. Um, put him on his back legs. So, doing an elite here. No, David misses a land drop and now passes. That's, oh, that's detriment. Oh, man, that's rough for elves at this point. Max also is not doing anything and I don't know I probably would have deployed a three drop and not a second mis elvish mystic if I would have known that a board sweeper would put me down on missing these line drops now that's rough you're giving max free turns which he did not need to have free turns through the breach finally hits his fifth line drop has just all kinds of awesomeness in his hand um, I expect to see a prime time come down here just start fishing up combo pieces um, let's get some all right, so ends up getting trophied, but even now that's rough because you give him another land, which is going to trigger more uh, Valakut triggers. Yeah, this I would say this game is now over. Max is full land on board, full hand. Again, that's a rough one. I don't know. Like I go back, I probably wouldn't have deployed that second Elvish Mystic. That's just... When you know he can get swept away there. I mean, I guess maybe you just have to explode out of the gates, and if he doesn't have an Anger of the Gods... Then you actually no, I guess, I guess maybe you just deploy both the, the mystics. Hope he doesn't have the sweeper, and then you just run him over, and kill him before he does anything. So maybe that's the train of thought he was on. Max is going for the the zombie road again. Feel the runes. I feel that's not. I feel you still go for Valakuts and mountains and just dome them for a million damage, get it over with. I'm not sure if I like the zombie at the zombie road. Okay, so Elvis Shroop comes down. Too little, too late. Still going to give him some mana maybe next turn. No, he's got a prime time hard cast it. Doesn't even need to. He's got a lightning bolt. Bolts the druid. Max on taps. A million mana in play. Tons of stuff in hand. I mean, at the rate we're going, he can just hard cast number cool, you know, next turn. <laughs> nope, through the breach. Dropping another prime time. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Valakutes. Get a bunch of lands. This game is over. Let's pack it up. Valakute trigger. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That uh, both the decks played out pretty well. Um, again, if, he, if 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 Max didn't have the anger, this game would have played out way different. Um, but that's what the deck does. It likes to sweep and then go go off. Hopefully, so. Well, hopefully you guys like this first, uh, not live but overdub of the game. And hopefully we can do this a little bit more in the future. And we'll get ready for round two as Max shakes the hand and walks away with the victory. Look at those cards in his hand. Look at those sham. Look at all those threes and four drops. Couldn't even cast them. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.